Hey guys and welcome to today's video. Uh, we are here today to talk about a eyeliner that I received in my October Ipsy bag and that is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil. It came in the shade Perversion which is the black black shade and I've had a chance to use this over the last couple of weeks. I'm excited to tell you about what I think of it. Uh, I'm also going to show you some footage of my first impressions day of it. This is the first product I've ever reviewed from Urban Decay. We're not going to talk a lot about the brand but we're going to talk about it a little bit. I'm then going to talk about this product in particular, show you the first impression day, and then give you my thoughts at the end. And I will, as always, put timestamps down below for all the parts of this video so you can watch whichever part is of interest to you. So let's talk a little bit about Urban Decay. It was started, uh, if not 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago. Uh, it was actually started by a woman named Sandy Lerner who partnered up with Wendy Zomner. Basically at the time they wanted, or Sandy specifically wanted, colorful, lipstick, colorful nail polish that wasn't just the usual pinks and reds that you got in cosmetics at the time. So Urban Decay first started with a line of colorful nail polishes and colorful lipsticks, things that were like greens and blues, they were called like smog and uh, like oil slick and it was just things that weren't seen at the time. Uh, I have to admit I have a little bit of a soft spot for Urban Decay. Uh, they sort of came out a little bit from the 90s grunge kind of era and so did I. I was a teen in the 90s and I remember it was sort of like Urban Decay, uh, Manic Panic did like the different hair dyes and things and I always wanted to dye my hair with Manic Panic hair dye and I never did. Um, never had any crazy hair colors but it just all was kind of together in that like grungy little bit of goth going on in it as well kind of feeling. So there's a little bit of soft spot in my heart for Urban Decay. As you probably know, I'm sure you know, they are sold at Sephora. So well, there is still the Urban Decay part of it, which is those colorful things, the kinds of shade names that they use. Uh, they're sort of one of those mainstream beauty brands now. And as more companies do things that are colorful, things that are, um, you know, outside the box, they aren't so much of a rebel in the industry anymore. They just have, you know, some different products. And there are some things they are very well known for. I feel like their Primer Potion is a favorite. Their Urban Decay All Nighter Spray is a favorite. Uh, they do some foundations that people love. I guess it's the, uh, it's the Naked Skin one that you hear talked about all the time. And then of course there are naked palettes and it's kind of funny how a brand that was known as being colorful and urban and things that you couldn't get an alternative is kind of best known for its very neutral palettes. Um, but the naked range has really expanded with the naked smoky and the naked uh, heat palette. In any case we all know a ton of Urban Decay products. They are uh, cruelty free and some of their products, I believe including this one, is vegan, but you can always find out on their website which products are vegan and which products aren't, if that is important to you. Uh, I always tend to do a little bit of a search for companies around uh, any controversy around them, and there were two things that I found. One is that they had an ad that they pulled for their, uh, I think it was eyeliners, but it was like liquid eyeliners that they called their razor eyeliners, and they did as many people do, I think this was just an oversight in my opinion, um, swatches on the arm, but because it was called like the razor eyeliners and they were all very small stripes right across here, it just had some connotations to it around self-harm that people um, had issues with. And I, I think it was just an oversight. I, they pulled the ad. Uh, the other thing that people say that they have not backed away from is that some of their shade names uh, are you know, related to drug use, um, which some people have a problem with. I don't love, um, I like some of their names, but I think other ones, especially considering that a lot of the market for these are um, younger, young ladies and gents that, wow, that made me sound really old, <laughs> um, younger people. Uh, you know, I think things like smog and, you know, oil slick, awesome, even around like whiskey and stuff like that. But, you know, do you really need shade ranges like Mainline and uh, LSD? I don't know. I mean, I know that's also kind of a, I don't want to say kind of a 90s thing, but I mean, they used to refer to the, uh, you know, main fashion at the time as heroin chic. It, it was kind of a thing then, but I feel like maybe they could still have the same vibe without specifically the drug references. Just my opinion and a few other people's opinions. <laughs> uh, but there you go. So let's start talking about this product in particular. 
This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Eye Pencil. Uh, this is not the full size, we'll talk about that in a moment, but they do have uh, 41 shades of this and they have some really interesting and cool looking colors there. The one that I got was just black, um, which let me test it, which was nice, but I do think the more fun colors in here are of particular interest. If you're going to buy the full size of this in Canada, it's gonna set you back $25 Canadian. Um, this is the kind of pencil that you have to sharpen, which I don't love. Uh, they talk about this as being a creamy, long-lasting, and waterproof eyeliner. They say that you can smudge it, but it dries down after about 30 seconds and then doesn't budge. And they have a lot of moisturizing ingredients in here, which is what makes it so creamy. Jojoba oil, vitamin E, and cottonseed oil. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a sample size, and just to kind of give you an idea of the size there. Um, however, this is 0.03 ounces, uh, this size, and the full size is 0.04 ounces. So it's not the longest eyeliner pencil in the world, um, and it's that plasticky outside, but it is the kind that you have to sharpen. What we're going to do now is hop into the first impression day of this product so you can see how it wore on me through the day, and then I'll be back to give you my thoughts at the end. So I'm about to put on Perversion for the first time. So this is pretty much a first impression. Let me get you zoomed in so we can put this on. So even though this looks plastic, I do believe this is the kind of eyeliner that you're going to have to sharpen once it starts to get dull, which is not my favorite. So I do find that to be really creamy. Like I barely, have to touch to get the black to go onto my lid and you can see it's not really tugging at my lid or anything which is really nice. I'm just doing a little bit under the lash line to tight line so it'll really darken my lash line up and I do see it bleeding a little bit actually maybe even more than a little bit onto my eye. That's one eye, I'll do the other, obviously. So there we go. I'm not really gonna do any other eye makeup because I want to see how this sets and how it wears. Uh, I am gonna put some mascara on, but other than that, we will do some check-ins through the day and see how it's holding up. And I'm gonna try not to sort of open my eyes too wide until this sets so that my hooded eyes don't mess up the eyeliner. I really want it to set into place to give it the best chance possible. So that's all for now. I do like how creamy and smooth this went on. And I mean smooth in the sense that it didn't skip, there was no tug to it. If you just sort of lightly touch this pencil to your skin, it deposits a good amount of dark, dark black. So we'll see how it holds up through the day. Hey guys, so uh, it is about five and a half hours since I put this eyeliner on and I have some thoughts, some positive and some negative so far. Let me zoom you in so I can show you what I'm thinking. So it has stayed very black, it hasn't smudged, it hasn't gone gray. The only thing I find is that it's transferred a little bit under my lashes here, just on the outer rim. Not so much on this eye, only sort of on this one. And I know that that's from the eyeliner because I don't have any lower lash mascara on today. And the mascara that I do have on, I know is uh, one that doesn't transfer on me. So mostly positive at this point, just with that little bit of negative. I'll zoom you back out. But now that I'm home, I'm probably gonna be a little less careful about rubbing my eyes and doing things like that. I'm just gonna be doing some uh, laundry and chores around the house for the next couple of hours. So I'll check in again in a couple of hours and see if anything has gotten moved around or smudged or looks any less black than it did. Okay, I'll be back in a little bit. Hey guys, so I am about to go take my makeup off. Uh, it hasn't really changed at all since the last time I did a check-in. It hasn't moved down under my eyes at all any more than it did, and I in fact wiped that little bit away and I don't see any more there. Uh, I'm gonna zoom you in, both to show you the little bit of feathering that happened with it, and then also I'm gonna try to rub my eye a little bit and see what happens. So let's zoom you in, we'll do that. 
So I don't know if you can tell here along the lash line. It all stayed very black, it stayed in place, but on the little fine lines that I have on my eye, it did feather a little bit into those fine lines. I believe it did that pretty much immediately upon application and it sort of stayed for the rest of the day. So my next question is, if I kind of did that, yeah, it does come off a little bit. And I also noticed that when I went and used my eyelash curly this morning, curler this morning, um, I really had to wipe off the uh, black eyeliner that was on there afterwards. I think because it's so creamy in coating the uh, skin and the lash line, it also got onto my lashes and transferred onto my lash curler. So it does transfer a little. So let's say, you know, if I did this, I'm trying not to rub my eyes too much. But that's actually not bad. Although it came off on my finger a little bit from doing that, I'm just trying to rub upwards to see if I can get it to smudge. You know, it came off on my finger there. That didn't smudge too, too badly on my eye, although I can see where I've rubbed it. Yeah, it really does lock in pretty well on there. So there was, oh, let me zoom you back out. So on the negative side, there was that little bit of feathering that happened and there was the bit of transfer that happened down there under my eye. Um, but on the positive side, this stayed black, black, black. Once it locked in, it really didn't move other than that one little bit right there. But as you can see at the end, even when I was like purposefully rubbing my eye, it didn't really get all smudgy and transfer everywhere. So this actually gives me more hope for this eyeliner than I initially had, I have to tell you the truth. So I'm going to keep testing it for a little bit. Um, try it a few different ways. I'm going to try it not having it in my waterline and just using it above my lash line to see if that addresses the little bit of movement issue that there was. Um, but I'm actually looking a lot more forward to playing with this than I was before I did the first impression today, which is always a good thing in a first impression. So I will be back very shortly in the next scene uh, to give you my final thoughts. So I have some very mixed feelings about this product. So I'm going to give you my pros and cons so you can make a decision if this is the kind of thing that would work for you. Let's talk about the pros first. This is like the blackest black, creamiest eyeliner pencil that I have ever used. I mean, it is like midnight black. Like it, you can't get it any like darker saturated than this is. Super impressed with that. And I did find that for the most part, it did stay, stay put. Um, I think that, you know, yeah, it's just that it's the creaminess to it and the blackness that I think is awesome. And that would make me really excited to try the other colors that they have because there are some beautiful colors in there. The greens and the blues and those really neat tones that they have, I think just really draw me in. Like. I am not a person who's going to use a pencil like this on my upper lash line. I'm always going to prefer a liquid liner for that. Um, but some of those colors, I think, are what would draw me in. And I have looked at reviews from other people who say this stays, this doesn't move, it is exactly what they want. Uh, and people do especially say that it's particularly good if you use it over primer, and that it really locks it in and keeps it there. On the con side of it, I think this more has to do with maybe your body chemistry, how oily you are, or what kind of shape eyes you have, because it wasn't completely smudge and transfer proof on me. You saw on my first impression day that it moved down below my eyes a little bit. I also have fairly hooded eyes, and I did find that when I wore this all day, and I have worn it since, uh, sometimes the hoodedness of my eyes kind of moves down to where I have eyeliner, and I did find it wasn't super noticeable, and it didn't happen until like eight hours into the day, but it was transferring to up here. And you could see that, that it was transferring to up there. I have read other reviews where people say this doesn't stay in their waterline very well, that it really smudges out from there, and I know a lot of people really like to use creamy pencils in their waterline. Interesting to note, Urban Decay actually has a 24-7 waterline eyeliner, so I feel like that's even them acknowledging a little bit that this isn't the best for the waterline, that they have a different product to use for that instead. So should you get this? I think that if you like eyeliner pencils and you're looking for something super black on first application, I might give this a try. It is a little pricey, but the people who love it, love it. 
I also think that, you know, if you're looking for a bright, saturated color for an eyeliner, like I, I am curious to go and buy one of their other colors and see what it's like because I do think it would be beautiful. Uh, I've seen some people say that they do ombre looks with a couple different colors from it. I think the colors are what would sell me on this. Uh, I feel like I wish that they had made it a roll-up one instead of something that sharpens, especially for something this creamy. It's going to make a mess when you sharpen it, uh, and I don't love that. I think that adds more fuss and muss into um, using an eyeliner pencil, uh, but overall I think that's what you have to balance is for some people this is great, it's not necessarily going to be for the waterline. Um, is this something that you are willing to take a chance on because I feel like it's 75% you're going to love it, 25% I think especially if maybe you have some oily or hooded lids that it's going to transfer a little bit on you. I would love to hear your opinions of this because it took me a little while to start to make up my mind with this because it's it's not a 100% hit it out of the ballpark, but there are things that I really love about it. So leave me in the comments down below what you think, because I would love to hear your opinion, and I respond to every comment that I get in the comments. I don't usually ask this, but hey, have you thought about hitting that bell button if you are subscribed to me so that you get notifications for my videos coming up? I tend to post Monday, Wednesday, Friday between about 4 and 6 p.m. Eastern time, but if you hit that bell, you will know right away when I post and you also have to be subscribed. So I will put my face up right here so you can hit that and be subscribed to my channel. And I'll put one of my other reviews or other videos right here so you can click on that and spend a bit more time with me. I do hope you enjoyed this today. Thumbs up if you did and I will see you again in my next video. Bye.